It all starts with the main character, Suneo Suzukawa, a university student studying marine biology and a big enthusiast of the ocean and its inhabitants. His favorite activity is diving, and he works at a store dedicated to this field. At his workplace, he lives with the attractive Mai Nanomiya, who wants to dive with him, and his friend Ayato Matsura, who encourages Suneo to enjoy his youth more since he often appears bored. Ayato suggests he should meet some cute girls, but Suneo dismisses the idea, stating he won't have time due to starting a new job the following week. One night, while Suneo was walking, he encounters a girl in a wheelchair speeding along. It turns out this was no car or motorcycle but just a disabled girl named Kumiko Yamamura. This girl is accompanied by her grandmother. However, when her grandmother momentarily ignores her, she inadvertently pushes the wheelchair, and when she spots Suneo, she bites him, claiming he touched her along the way. After recovering from the shock, Suneo decides to accompany them and even joins them for dinner, as they seemed quite hungry. Upon arriving at their home, Suneo is greeted by a somewhat hostile black cat that growls at him. Kumiko, or rather, Yosi, as she prefers to be called, expresses her displeasure at being addressed by her real name. She is not very pleasant to be around, as she is quite grumpy and even dislikes the cat. When Suneo offers her tea, she throws a cushion at him. After dinner, Yossi's grandmother offers Suneo a well-paying job to help with his studies. He discusses this with his friends at the dive shop, where his boss admits he did such a good job that he wanted to hire him full-time, but Suneo declined, as he plans to go to Mexico. While Suneo talks about his dream of traveling internationally, it's clear that Mai isn't thrilled about the idea. We also learn that Yossi's grandmother returns home every day to follow Yossi's instructions. The condition for Suneo's employment is that he cannot leave the house without Yossi's permission. However, she won't be at home and will leave the house to party. Now Suneo's job is to follow Yossi's instructions while she is locked in her room. These instructions are quite peculiar and often irritate him like searching for four leaf clovers or counting imperfections in the floor. While collecting the clovers, he learns Yossi has an unfulfilled wish, but when he tries to look inside her room, she sprays him with water. The situation becomes so difficult that Sunio's friends suggest he should quit if the job frustrates him so much. Suddenly, Ayato reveals that Mai is completely crazy about Sunio. Meanwhile, at the university, Sunio's project for studying abroad has been approved. Specifically, he'll be going to Mexico. However, he'll need to learn Spanish and earn more money. Still, he's excited about it. Now we see Yossi imagining herself as a mermaid, swimming with marine creatures in a beautiful underwater scene. However, she wakes up to realize she was just dreaming with the radio on. Her grandmother turns it off. Yossi asks if they can resume their walks, but her grandmother refuses. She believes the world is filled with terrifying animals and that she can't protect Yossi, nor can she protect herself. Later, Suneo arrives at the grandmother's house to inform her that he's quitting his terrible job of taking care of Yossi. However, finding her not there, he goes to Yossi's room to tell her. But she's not at home either. Suneo enters Yossi's room and discovers her to be a talented artist, with beautiful drawings that show a deep love for the sea. When he leaves the house, he encounters the grandmother, who informs him that Yossi has run away. Suneo manages to catch up with Yossi just before she tries to cross the train tracks. She expresses her desire to go to the beach. Initially, Suneo considers leaving her, but he ultimately turns back and agrees to take her despite his reluctance to continue working for her. Later, Yossi is briefly left alone while Suneo calls her grandmother to let her know that he found Yossi and will be coming home late. They eventually reach the beach, where Yossi attempts to maneuver her wheelchair through the sand and realizes it's more challenging than she thought. 
since her father passed away without answering her question about his love for the sea when she was a child, she is now motive firsthand the taste of the sea, even though she knows about it from books. Yosi even climbs out of her wheelchair and starts crawling toward the water. Suneo, being a gentleman, can't leave her behind, so he carries her into the water where she confirms that the sea is indeed salty. They take a moment to enjoy the experience until dusk. Upon their return, it goes without saying that Yossi's and the protagonist ends up asking her where she'd like to travel. Despite being forbidden to leave the house, Yossi takes advantage of her grandmother's nap to explore the city. This leads to Suneo taking Yossi to eat in the downtown area, where Yossi boasts in a confident manner that she has dated five guys at the same time. Out on the streets, Suneo had the brilliant idea to get a skateboard for Yossi, but things didn't go as planned. He then takes her shopping for art supplies and to a Ferris wheel, though Suneo himself gets nauseous as he doesn't like heights. In addition to encouraging Yossi to start cooking at home, our protagonist even constructs a special bench for her. He takes her to the cinema, the park, and the aquarium where Suneo impresses her with his extensive knowledge as a marine biologist by explaining in great detail about each species they see at the aquarium. This both encourages and inspires Yossi to paint when she's alone in her room. On the other hand, her grandmother talks to a man who seems to know Yossi, discussing finding her a job and teaching her how to live independently while they're at a restaurant. Though she acknowledges that her granddaughter has changed and that it's due to Suneo's arrival, she tells the man she won't let it happen because Suneo will deceive her. She assures the man that Yossi is willing to be alone as she knows lovers roam around while she sleeps. Yossi wanted to borrow some books to read at home, so the library was their next stop. However, there's a hitch. Yossi needs to sort it out on her own as they require a library card to check out the books. It's not surprising that the shy girl is afraid to approach the librarian due to her long confinement and her old-fashioned grandmother. Nevertheless, she's a little overwhelmed by the situation. Thankfully, the librarian is kind to her, as they seem to share similar tastes in reading. The girl's name is Kana Kashimoto, and when Suneo arrives, he mistakenly assumes she's Yossi's girlfriend. This embarrasses Yossi, and she quickly denies it. But before that, Suneo told her that a girl like her wouldn't waste time with just one boyfriend. According to him, she could have up to five. On their way back, Suneo tells Yossi that she's made a good friend. She responds that Kana is her first friend of her age, because yes, Yossi is 24 years old. So, She's older than our main character. By the way, when Suneo takes Yossi to the dive shop where he works, Ayato falls in love at first sight because she's exactly his type. He's now trying to get Yossi to share her social media, but she doesn't have any. Mai also shows up and introduces herself, but Yossi, feeling a bit jealous, doesn't want to talk to her. She quickly escapes, and Suneo tries to chase after her. After finding her, they talk, and she tells him she didn't like the place, but our protagonist still doesn't understand what happened. She tells him he wouldn't understand. Once she's angry, she tells her grandmother to call Suneo and let him know he's no longer needed to take care of her. Our main character simply doesn't comprehend her decision and continues trying to study at home. After a while, while Suneo was working at a dive shop, he looked at some products and talked to his boss, suddenly coming up with a great idea. Suddenly, he receives an email notifying him that he has been awarded a scholarship to study in Mexico, so he doesn't have much time left in Japan. Meanwhile, Yossi is at the library with the librarian, who asks her why she's not with Suneo. Yossi replies that she doesn't need him anymore, but the librarian knows that Yossi is fond of Suneo. Suddenly, a girl approaches them, wanting them to read her a story. Kana lets Yossi do it, but she becomes very nervous, and her reading style makes the kids sleepy, causing most of them to leave. 
except for one little girl who asks how the castle in the story looks. Yossi proceeds to draw it on the board, and the little girl thinks it's super cool. Kana sees this and tells Yossi that she should become an artist, which makes Yossi nervous. Later, Suneo enters Yossi's house, and he turns off the lights to show her a fish-shaped lamp. It turns out to be Suneo's favorite because he used to see it a lot in a shop when he was a child. He later learned that the fish, being very sociable, doesn't have its parents, just like Suneo, a child of divorced parents. Yossi tells him she hopes he gets to see the fish someday, and just before Suneo tells her he's going to Mexico, the lamp goes out, leaving them very close. However, Yossi mercilessly headbutts him. The next day, Yossi's grandmother is surprised by the change in her. She tells Yossi that the world isn't as terrifying as she thinks and takes her to the zoo with Suneo, where she gets scared by a tiger. While walking, Yossi shares her dream of becoming a professional artist with Suneo, who expresses his admiration for her drawings, making Yossi blush. Sometime later, it's revealed that Yossi's grandmother has passed away due to old age. Suneo reassures Yossi that he'll be there for her whenever she needs to talk. Yossi explains that she has enough money to live on her own but can't afford to pay Suneo to take care of her, and he understands. Later, Suneo is seen diving with his friends, but he realizes his oxygen is running out quickly, so he has to resurface. Ayato finds it strange that his oxygen depleted so rapidly. Meanwhile, Yossi is interrupted by the man who spoke to her grandmother. They both wonder how she will manage since no one can take care of her. Yossi confidently states that she will become a professional artist. One of the men dismisses her dream as ridiculous, claiming she no longer has her grandmother's support. Next, Yossi is by a river and nearly falls in, but Mai saves her. Yossi questions their presence, and Ayato is there too. Mai tells Yossi to let Suneo pursue his dream, as he's working hard for it, and Yossi was holding him back. Here, Yossi learns that Suneo is going to Mexico. Mia asks Yossi about her feelings for Suneo, but Yossi leaves without saying a word. Later, Suneo visits Yossi, noticing that she has cut her hair and removed all her drawings from the wall. Yossi tells him she's taken everything down and tells him to leave if he has nothing to do there. However, she changes her mind, asking him to take her to the beach. As they talk, Yossi starts crying and walks away. Suneo stops her, telling her that he won't leave for Mexico today and that he doesn't care about her money. He just wants to be with her. Yossi explains that she has given up on her dreams, taken a job in an office to support herself, and move on from her past. Suneo asks if that's what she truly wants since she's crying, but Yossi leaves without saying anything more. But suddenly, it starts to rain, and Yossi's wheelchair gets stuck in the middle of the street. Suneo rushes to help her but gets hit by a car. In the hospital, Suneo is shown to be okay but with some serious injuries. The doctor tells him he needs rehabilitation because he has sustained several injuries to his feet and arms. Later, Yossi visits him at the hospital to apologize, but he tells her it wasn't her fault. However, he's a bit sad as he might not be able to go diving again. The next day, Mai shows up to encourage him and takes him outside for fresh air. Suneo tells her he's no longer interested in going to the university in Mexico, but Mai tells him not to give up. Suneo becomes frustrated, and Mai unexpectedly confesses her love to him, leaving him silent. Later, we see Mai at Yossi's house, shouting that Suneo is no longer interested in going to university and insinuating that she will take care of Suneo and be with him forever. This prompts Yossi to react. She tells Mai that Suneo will never give up and will achieve his dream. She also says that her feelings are stronger than Mai's, which inspires Yossi to start drawing again. She shows these drawings to the children at the library, with Suneo present. She begins to tell a story about the drawings, and it appears to be a subtle representation of her and Suneo's relationship. 
The story is so touching that it motivates Suneo to pursue his rehabilitation and put in a lot of effort. After some time, Yossi visits Suneo, who tells her he's about to be discharged and will go to study in Mexico. He asks Yossi to see him off at the airport. However, Yossi doesn't show up, so Suneo decides to search for her. He finds many boxes as if she's moving out. Determined, he continues searching and enlists the help of his friends. Later, we see Yossi calmly heading back to her house, but she crashes into a man and falls down. Luckily, Suneo is there to save her. He asks her where she was and tells her he was looking for her everywhere. Yossi reveals that she decided to live on her own and tells Suneo to follow his own path. Suneo professes his love for her, and she admits that she loves him too. They share a kiss, and that's how this anime recap ends.